That it? Hello everyone, welcome to Union Meeting. All right everybody, Depot Meeting, if you want to all come down where, we can, where you can hear me, that'll be all right. I don't want to talk to just this mob of troublemakers here. Yeah. Thanks. All right, Labor Day this uh, Monday, and we are marching again. Been a couple of years because of COVID, but we've got approval to march, and the march is on. I see that uh, the flyers up and about everywhere, but uh, just just a couple of things that I will say, and uh, I will say just in case anybody, I mean, we've had a lot of new members in the last two years. They might not know what we do on Labor Day. Now, this march is a special one for us. Celebrates 160 years of continuous unionism uh, in our industry. So uh, from way back when the first railways uh, got put down, that's when the first uh, union uh, came into existence in our industry. Yep. So those coming should have a look through their drawers for an old union shirt. A couple of photographs in and around the place uh, of the shirts we've had over the last 15, 20 years. Uh, and the reason for that is that's the theme this year, retro, you know. We do have a limited number of uh, new shirts and they'll go to our newer members, I would imagine, who don't have a shirt. Looking around the room, I'm sure all you guys have got your shirts. Uh, Andrew tells me he's almost got a COVID full bus uh, uh, from Willowong and that'll be good. It'll be good to see a good strong showing from a good strong union depot. Can I just you know? can I just interrupt here yeah. and I'll step away? Yep. Um, the bus is leaving here at 8 a.m. on Monday. It is then going to Inala Plaza. It'll be at Inala Plaza for anyone who wants to catch it from there. That'll be at 8:10, and then Richland Station at the stop out on the road at Gardens Road at 20 past eight. So if that makes it easier for anyone, um, and just remember about the. Um, this, this premises is our drug and alcohol free, so when we come back, we've had a few drinks, we've got to be careful about coming back into the depot. So that's why we thought it would be easier if anyone wants to get picked up and dropped off at those sites, that would be great. So it's eight o'clock here, 10 past eight in Nala, 20 past eight Richland Station, out on the road. Okay? I'll leave it back to you, Tom. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, Andrew. Because marching, is only half the fun on Labor Day. When we get to the exhibition grounds, uh, there's plenty of time there, plenty of time to enjoy the free food, the free drinks, and uh, the free family entertainment. Many, many drivers bring their kids, bring their whole families, their grandkids even now, it's tradition, and uh, they have a great day after the march at the show grounds, you know. If you're coming on the bus, just remember to uh, ask the driver when he is gonna leave, so that it, you, you don't miss uh, the bus back again. I'll go on to uh, bus radios. We've got an ongoing problem uh, out there with the, the, the Motorola radios. They are on the way out, but uh, one of the problems is that uh, the repeaters that they've been bouncing off of for years don't appear to be high enough anymore with the uh, Brisbane being built upwards. So there's a lot of black spots out there. Uh, if you encounter a black spot, make sure that you do report it. Make sure that you defect it. It could very well be the bus radio or it could be the uh, fact that it's in a black spot. You're not to know. So defect it and let them, uh, let them check it out. When you've done the defect slip, get a copy to your union delegate so your union delegate can check it out, okay? Now, in the tunnel, 30 metres from the port. Eh? In the tunnel, 30 metres from the port. Yep. Well, the reasons that they're giving us, and there's a mobile, there's a bus, 18, there's an 1801 or something like that, that's going around to all the reported black spots to do a radio check. You know, and at some places there where we're reporting that the radios are not working, they're getting a signal. So it can be like, so for example, Browns Plains Interchange. At some parts of Browns, change, Browns Plains Interchange, there's no single signal, where at other parts there is a signal. You know, I'd hate for a driver to be sitting at one part of Browns Plains trying to use the radio that's not working when 50 meters up the road he can get a signal. 
and he doesn't know. So we've got to, we've got to get this information out there. Uh, 1801's got to do its round of the, black, the reported black spots and uh, get the report back to us so that we know where the black spots are and how they're going to fix it. I know that at, at Carina Bus Depot, they're blaming the, the large 5G tower that's just been put in. You, you can't get a radio to work in Carina Bus Depot. So the Motorola were back. They uh, put a repeater on top of the 5G tower. Still no radio working in Carina Bus Depot. So they'll be back again. I know that their, t their contract is being terminated and we're getting a new radios in September, but uh, that's too far away as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Motorola are still under contract and they've got to fix this system. One of the biggest problems with it, and uh, we're not going to have the problem with the new radio system, that the Motorola system is analog. Can you believe it? We still have an analog radio system. Yeah. The new system by Tate will be digital. I better not walk too far from the camera. And it will not experience these type, types of problems. It will be much clearer and uh, much more uh, that it will work. It can't come soon enough. September can't come soon enough. But meantime, we've, we've got to have a radio system that is workable. So they're out there and they're fixing it. So make sure that you do report uh, two things on the defect, where the radio wasn't working uh, and, uh, and, and why it, and if you, that it wasn't working and where you were when it wasn't working so that they can check out both things. They can check out the radio in the bus and they can check out the location as well. Uh, uh, what I will tell you, because uh, I mean last week we had a driver from here assaulted by uh, at least four chromers involved in, in the assault and uh, the radio using the radio was a problem because it was she was trying to use the radio on the dash and uh, the chromers were interfering with it. Uh, there is a, a staff alert going around and uh, I would advise that uh, I'll leave some here, I'd advise everybody to get it. I just went out with Andrew to look at some of uh, the buses out there where the radio is and where the, the silent food alarm is uh, placed. On this staff alert, it says there's two ways to activate the silent alarm. It says, one, press the red key on, uh, on your radio system. Could we see a red key? Nope. We could not see a red key. The color has faded over the years on that key. The other one is at your left foot. That thing that you, you, you rest on, you can flick that up with your other foot and put your foot down on the button. That is a silent alarm. It works on a separate, uh, a separate system than your Motorola radio, so it is not going to fail. There's no known on record of it failing ever in 30 years ago that we, the union got these put in. And uh, we got them put in there for... Uh, Two reasons. One, that it, you could set it off discreetly without, uh, without aggravating, sorry, without aggravating a person uh, or, or kicking off. And secondly, it kept your hands free as well to protect yourself. Yeah. So th these are things, uh, and it's very, very difficult. I've spoken to uh, scores of drivers that have been assaulted, and uh, it's very, very difficult for them to remember that de-escalation or uh, training that they've had. And the reason for that, as Bennett found out from uh, the, uh, the guy that trains the senior network officers uh, and trains them in these things, and six months after any this kind of training that a bus driver gets or anybody gets, six months it's gone, you know. And I've spoken, as I said, I've spoken to hundreds, almost hundreds of drivers now that have been assaulted and they forget. They forget about this switch. They forget about the one. They hit the one with their knee, and uh, even though it makes a noise and, and flashes a signal, nothing goes through the bus control, you know. And then there's a, they, they hit one on the radio, and then they go into a queue, you know. And uh, bus control's got to try and work out what the alarm is. But the, uh, the attack switch, as we call it, the one on your foot, is there for when you're under attack or under the threat of attack. 
Just try and remember that. Get actually, take one of these, get them to run off copies, and, uh, and carry one with you. And when you've, got, when you've got the opportunity, just run through it. It tells you how to activate it, then it tells you how to deactivate it as well. You know? So it's a good thing to have in your cash box. You know? In this day and age, where we're still getting a driver assaulted every week and a driver abused every day. Still happening. Even when, uh, in the height of the pandemic, when uh, patronage was down 90%, guess who was still riding the buses? The Cromers, the fair evaders, the abusers. You know? And there's another thing, and this is not, there's another thing we add to the big three now, Road rage. A lot of road rage out there that our drivers are putting up with. If anybody saw the Channel 7 News uh, last week, uh, that was, that's only what got covered on film. And that was the road rager himself, thinking that he was in the right. Thinking that it's okay to hit 100 kilometers an hour to catch up with a bus that he thought ran a red light and tell the, dri and tell the driver off in a high-speed uh, exchange, and then pull in in front of the bus at 100 and uh, hit the brakes to 50 and expect the bus to stop. bus couldn't stop. You, know. see the, you see that tape from start to finish? The bus driver, uh, well, he did run a red light, but that was nothing to do with the guy. <laughs> nothing to do with the guy. You know, that they would never have had any contact with that person if that person didn't instigate it you know? and that's what we're up against there was another one just after that showed a guy getting out of his uh getting out of his car at a set of lights a grown man you know probably works probably respectable job and go, going and trying to get into the bus to uh, assault the bus driver a uh, passenger was filming it that probably turned the guy away but he went to the door then he walked round the bus to the window. The driver kept the window closed. That, that was it. Don't let these people on your bus, you know. And, uh, because that's only the beginning of it. That is only the beginning of it. Okay. So uh, what I will say too, uh, Andrew, did uh, Peter bring some of them free will kit forms back? I appear to be out. I got an, an e-news just went out yesterday and uh, there's, there's a little button on it that says press here it'll take you to uh, the, the Morris Blackburn free will kit you know so if if you're a member of the RTB and you haven't got a will done up you can get a free will done for you and your uh, family uh, due to Mo courtesy of Morris Blackburn and I will tell you that's a service that's offered to, to non-union, non-RTBU members for $599. So it's a good way to immediately get your uh, union dues back, is just get them to, uh, to send you a will kit, fill out the will kit, either, either online, or what I'm gonna do is gonna have some uh, physical copies in the office, so you can come and get them, and we'll put them through, and you can get your, you can get your will lodged. Yep. You've done it? That's it, that's it, that's it. So when you see this newsletter, you will see the bit that I'm talking about, free will kits. There's a little bit there for you to press, a couple of little bits to press. That'll take you through to, you'll be able to do it online. They will ask you for your union number, obviously. And uh, you can see the fact for uh, union members and for non-union members, there's a charge of uh, $599. So that's uh, just one of the things that I recommend that every single one of us takes advantage of. I mean, if you die, I don't know this from experience, but what I've heard is if you die, if you die without a will, I, well, I used to think the fact that I'd put my wife on my superannuation form as a benefactor, I just thought that was enough. Lawyers have told me, no, you die without a will, it's a shamozzle. You know, the house, everything. It's a shamozo. So this simplifies it. The form simplifies it. It's easy to do. Take five, ten minutes. Send it away. It, they'll send you back the uh, confirmation. You, you sign off on it. And that's your will, Lois. And even if you leave us, uh, 
uh, later and even after you retire, it's still lodged with them. Yep. Yep. I think it's Melbourne, no. uh, I think it's Melbourne, Bennett says. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the probate people, yep. they're all down in Melbourne. Yeah. But that's all right. It, it's, a, it's a good thing to have. Uh, yeah, I, I did, did mine when we were tomorrow. Yep. Another, another thing to, to make use of Morris Blackburn is uh, how is, is your hearing? How's your hearing, Richard? Have you done a hearing test? Are you speaking to me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm speaking to you. Are you talking to me? Because, uh, listen, we've always uh, run, Morris Blackburn has always run hearing tests for us, for, for people. And it doesn't matter if you're a bus driver for five, ten years. It's your working career, it's over. So if you're in your 50s, or something like that in your 60s definitely you've you've suffered some industrial hearing loss no doubt about it it's just a matter of how much so morris blackburn will send you to a, an audiologist there's a small charge for that because it's a bit like going to a specialist but they will get the percentage they will do the test get the percentage and then morris blackburn will go after work cover for a payout for you it doesn't mean that you can't work it just means that you're entitled to some compensation uh, because of hearing loss. Now, I'll give you a little uh, example. For many, many years, we were getting between five and ten thousand dollars for members. You know, if they had ten or fifteen percent hearing loss. Well, last year or last year, eighteen months ago, we we we, we broke through that glass ceiling with a couple of members. We broke through that glass ceiling. And now we're, they're getting offered as twice as much as that, you know? And that was because, who remembers butter boxes yeah. and buses prior to that? They were noisy buggers. They were noisy buggers. Prior to the, this breakthrough, though they never brought that into the equation. Council always managed to fight that. But now we beat them on it. That they, that they cause or partially caused your hearing loss. So we're getting people and they're getting, uh, sometimes one ear is different than another, that can't be helped, but you're getting 12%, 15%, 17%, well that translates to a, a cash payment to you. And uh, you, you get your cash payment, you go back to work the next day. So there's no loss of work or anything to you. You get, a, you get an offer, Morris Blackburn will not take any money until you get, you get something that's there. Uh, what do you call that? No win, no fee. So no claim, no fee. So I've got a list. Uh, I'm putting somebody through every week. Got a list of names there, uh, just sort of just to keep council busy. Yeah. So nothing ventured, nothing gained. If you think that if you can't hear the missus when she's telling you your dinner's ready, or anything, or you can't hear them calling you. The time I go out, Richard Irish, time you were out and you're just sitting there. Maybe you've got a hearing problem. Maybe it's going to be worth a five-figure sum to you. Uh, the last time I was here, I got the big, uh, the big Islanders on the list. I can't pronounce his name. But I need a few more from Willowong. <laughs> need a few more from Willowong, okay? Uh, what else has been happening? The government has announced that it won't stand in the way of the uh, superannuation uh, guarantee rise. So that means that uh, come July it will rise from 9.5% uh, to 10%. So that is good news for our casuals and our trainees who only get the bare 9.5%. Uh, us uh, permanent guys who get uh, 14 from council and put in five yourself, my understanding is that will remain as, because that's what council done the last time, if you remember, when it went from nine to nine and a half. They, they withheld the half a percent that they were given from the five, so they only gave four and a half. They do that again, and it'll be uh, just in time for our next DBA claim. I'll say, well, that's us already half a percent uh, pay rise before we, before we even begin. October, it'll run out. Okay, so we will get, now you'll get a pay rise this October, Jimmy. 
next April, and then the next October it'll run out. Yeah. So if they've, if they've nobbled as half a percent on the super, well, that'll be half a percent on top of it, anything that we get, hopefully. Yeah. That, well, that, that'll be our argument, okay? Because you took that half a percent when the super went up, that means you've got the money. That means you've the, got uh, the money. Sorry? When did the half percent come? I think 1st of July. So, yeah. So, you, coming up on his federal budget, he should announce it. He should announce it in his budget coming up uh, later this month. That that'll go, that the, the, the guarantee will go from nine and a half to 10. And that's a long time coming. The promise was to take it to 12%. And, uh, you know, that, that, that'll be great for our casuals and for our, uh, and our trainees. Actually, it'll make it uh, more and more uh, expensive for council to have casuals, you know, and, uh, which is a good thing. But from, from their previous uh, behavior on this, it will not mean that, will, they mean that the permanent superannuation will go up. Remember, they tried to, uh, they tried to talk you out of putting that 5% in on your own because uh, sitting on 19% super, it's, it, it, it's a fantastic superannuation scheme for us and we don't want, uh, we don't want it mucked with. We don't want it mucked with. Okay. They do, they do, they do. Yeah, that's what they were after, uh, Jimmy. That was one of the things that they were after in the, in, in the super, in the, in the EBA, to get into a position where they didn't have to give that. Yeah, yeah. And other things, you know. Where we could, uh, the members could see through it. The members saw through it like that. Said, now, well, let, let's keep it as it is, you know. What else? Yeah. Oh yeah, new work coming. Anybody that's old enough can remember uh, Southwestern uh, got some uh, work from us uh, many, many years ago, and uh, they did it for they've did it for 25 years. It used to work out of that we shared a depot at Richlands with them for many years. When that closed down, uh, when we closed down our Richlands, uh, effort, they, they maintained another depot at Richlands still doing the work. It was always council's work, and uh, council has uh, pulled the pin on, on, on the, the subcontract arrangement, basically. That work, I understand, will come here. Uh, not 100% sure on that, but it should come here, which will mean that some of your work will then go to uh, Sherwood because there's not enough uh, room here. The Depot newsletter came out yesterday saying we're getting the 101, Yeah, that makes and sense. Some, and some of the school ones. Yeah. We're not getting the 103s. Right. Not, not getting the... Not getting the 103s, but we're getting the 101s, 102s yeah. and some right. of the districts. Well, we just want to make sure that there's an adequate uh, route training package, you know, for that. It's not going to start till uh, July or something like that, but the sooner you get familiarised with those routes, the better, you know. So there's a wee job for Andrew to come in. What they done with uh, what they done over at Sherwood with the 109s, as they just simply dropped the route map on the on the front counter. I told the guys that they should be familiar with all those streets because. It runs, where does it run from? It runs from uh, Bogor Road, or does it start at Bogor Road or Dutton Park? The, well, I see them up yeah. on Ipswich yeah. Road yeah. there, Maruka. Yeah. And then they, they go all the way to Bogor Road. They yeah. run over to Sherwood Road there, you know, that whatever parallels Ipswich Road, uh, yeah. Fairfield Road. Fairfield Road, we've seen, we've seen so them on they Fairfield sort of Road. Around back and forth across the rail line. And that was, that was, their, that was their initial answer to the, the drivers. You, know, you, you should not get lost on this because everywhere you go is a part of a route that you do. But uh, the other day I went to Sherwood Depot for the depot meeting and I had scarcely even got out of the car. And uh, older drivers were all right with it, but newer drivers were unfamiliar because they were still unfamiliar with the, the routes that did those uh, work. So they were certainly unfamiliar with uh, the 109s. 
So we, we got on there, we, we got at the depot, he's a, he's a new de delegate there, but we got him to go into the manager and, and, and say these concerns. And I believe that some sort of route familiarization has been worked out. I mean, this is three days after it started. So what I said was, uh, all you gotta do is download the route from the CCTV and start running it through the DEMS system, you know, for starters, that'll, that'll help a lot of people. But uh, that they're doing something now. And we don't want them to all of a sudden come the 5th of July or the 1st of July, just hit you with a, a run print or something like that. We want them at least to bring you into the classroom maybe even start running uh, some buses around the routes. Yeah. There's nothing, nothing beats actual route training. Uh, virtual route training might be okay for some people, but from I know and my experience as a bus driver, there is nothing like actually doing it, nothing. So we'll see what they come up with, but they have assured us there will be a route training package. I've done it again, Andrew. Okay. You gotta live and get me super glue. Glue me down to this. All right. Flu shots. I'd advise everybody to get a flu shot. Yep. Yep. Masks. We've had a lot of uh, a lot of uh, requests for union masks, and uh, we did run out. We underordered, but we have ordered more. Something tells me that uh, that last lockdown won't be the last. You know, you just look at the news of the night time. Uh, it's going to come into the country again from somewhere and we're going to have more lockdowns. I can't say where, I can't say when, but we will have more union masks. But masks are PPE and your employer must provide them. I had a call from a, a Sherwood driver say he went and asked for PPE, he went and asked for a mask. And because he was on, he was on the at-risk, uh, he, uh, he was 65 with diabetes or uh, asthma. So he, people like that should still be carrying a mask. Well, the guy at the counter threw him a, a disposable one and said, that's all we've got. If you need any in future, you, you have to provide your own. Well, that's wrong. That is wrong, and don't cop that. The, the last time they did that, we bunged on a stair, and all of a sudden, boxes of masks appeared underneath the magic counter, and boxes of bloody uh, what do you call it? Hand sanitizer. Only after uh, you run. Yeah. Channel seven. yeah, only uh, yeah. I'll go on Channel Seven, Channel Nine, and ABC well, again. Yeah. You know, shame them. We we need that. That is PPE. We're the essential workers in, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of a lockdown, and we need all the PPE that, that we can get, all of it.